Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's game. For the squad. For the squad is brought to you by Red Dot Radio. We're back. This is For the Squad. We are here, presented by Red Dot Radio. I am your host, Sean Bowman Jr., in the cut with E. Drew, JT. How y'all boys doing? Good, good, Sean. What do you got going on this week? You, man, had, a, you had a busy weekend, man. Last week, last weekend, Halloween party was lit. JT was out and about getting lit himself. How you feeling? Shit, I'm still lit myself, yeah. man. Hung over? <clears throat> Saturday, man. A&M, Northgate, tore it up with my old Miss buddies after they pulled it out. Woke up Sunday, went to Texans game, tried to keep up with some co-workers. I could not. They can drink. You're... And they showed me a good tie, I can tell you that. Well, you went to the Texans game. We will be at the Texans game. This is our preview. Three out of the four of four of the squad is going to be at the Texans game this Thursday night for Brady's bet. We're going to pick it. Not unless you're going to. Uh, about Thursday? To say, no, I will not. Four out of four there. going? No, Damn. No. We might as well get our own section. Boots on the ground. Yeah. Boots on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get this podcast started. So, World Series is here. It's tied 1-1. Astros dropped game one, but picked it up game two. Game three is tonight. This is Tuesday. We're airing a day late. How do y'all feel about the series so far? It's been pretty even as we head back to Philadelphia. I mean, statistically wise, one-to-one, it is even. Watching the way the game has been flowing, the Astros have completely dominated the series. Um... I can't believe how horrible Dusty Baker managed in game one. It was one of the worst things I've ever seen from him in his three years being here. Leaving Verlander out way too long in a game when you're up 5-3 and then putting in Luis Garcia in the 10th when you have the league leader ERA and Ryan Stanek still on your bench um, to face 3-4-5 of Real Muto, Bryce Harper, and Nick Castellanos. It just it didn't make any sense. Yeah. It infuriated me. But, you know, luckily the players back it up and came back out in one game, too. Drew, your thoughts so far? Uh, for it to be 1 1, I think the Phillies definitely kind of won the first two games, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the away team to come away with a split, I think that's good enough for any team, and, and they'd be happy with that. The managers would be happy with that. The players are happy with that. So they've got to be coming back into Philadelphia feeling good. Uh, rain delay on Monday, so that was a little unfortunate, so it kind of pushes back every game for the rest of the series back a day. I thought it was like um, an actual like day off, because they played what? They had Sunday well, off. They Sunday had travel, travel day. Okay. Day. I was travel traveling day. Monday, right. that's yeah. why yeah. I was and thinking Monday Sunday. rain delay. Yeah. Um, so, a couple days off, uh, I think that benefited, we were just talking about it, benefited the Phillies because they were able to, uh, instead of start uh, Noah Syndergaard on Monday, they're now starting who today, JT? Uh, Suarez. 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 So that favors them. Uh, I'm, uh, we got McCullers on the mound, correct? Yes, we got McCullers <laughs> going tonight versus Suarez. We got Javier going tomorrow against Nola. I'm shaking my head. They're penciled in game five, Verlander versus Syndergaard. That's just not going to happen. They're going to throw Wheeler game five. There's no way they can afford to save him for six. Yeah. Uh, JT, what do you... Th- I'm sorry to hijack the segment here. Sean, I want your opinion on it as well. Uh, what do you guys think about for seven game series? How do you think the home game should be split up? And if, if you don't get where I'm saying, I'll go a little bit further. Do you think it should be two home games and then two away games and then one home, one away, one home? Or yeah, if- how it is this year? Uh, and it's been like this in the past, and I'm, I've pretty big take on this. Uh, I believe this year it's two home games for the Astros, then on the road for three, and then you come home for six and seven. Well, what, what would you guys prefer if you were the home team? If you were the one that the, the team that had home field advantage, what would you want? Oh, if I had home field advantage? Right, you're the Astros. Oh, so well, let's say you're the Astros. I want the this second option. I want the second option. You want to go to the Philly two, for three, three straight? Two. You want the 2-3-2? Two, two? I think as an objective fan, like basketball did it perfectly. Because I believe basketball does it two, it started, two, one, one, one. It all started because of travel costs. Exactly, and basketball has less players to travel, so it's easier for them to do. I feel like that is a more fun series. Having the last three games alter like that, but as a home team, heck yeah, I won six and seven. Because if I drop six, I still got seven at home. It's the same part. You also have to get to game six or seven, too. But 
baseball versus basketball, it, it fits the basketball mold better because everybody's resting in basketball. For baseball, you throw pitchers, they're burnt. If you throw a travel day in there, that throws everything off, right? You could have a starter throw three innings, 45 pitches, and then a travel day, he can come back and throw 45 the next day. But if you're playing back-to-back, yeah. you know, he's only going to throw probably one, right? So I'm not saying it's going to affect this series in particular, but I think baseball should always be 2-3-2 because of the pitching factor that the NBA doesn't have. Yeah. True. Just How do you as what? as like a fan perspective and not thinking about the pitching mm-hmm. and the uh, I guess because that comes into a certain um, competitive aspect of it where I think if that is the main reason why they do it is because they don't want to allow too many eight, you don't want to allow an ace to throw three games then I think that's fair reasoning if that is the reasoning behind it uh, but just from a fan perspective personally I like the two two one one one. Yeah. Just because I think it's it's if so the Astros for instance if you split it's now a brand new series and it's three two exactly and it's three games on the road and two so you just lost your home field advantage by splitting two games at home you lost your home field advantage yeah mm-hmm. so I think that kind of sucks yeah well you have to go two and zero you no you do you do because you don't want to be down three two that's stupid I don't like that and I understand so like it now like it presents an opportunity where. If Philly goes 2-1. They're up 3-2 going back to games. Or what is it? They're yeah. up 3-1 three three going one. back to 6-7. and seven. Yeah. No, because we already got one. No. I'm, yeah, if they, yeah, they go 2-1. 2-1 and one. Or you, two and one three and one going into game five, I apologize. Correct. I yeah. Apologize. yeah, and then at that point, you're in desperate mode. <laughs> like, yeah. And then you and, but you're at home. True. That, I, I guess you're but right. Game, on an elimination game, Kevin Moore. Anything can happen. Yeah, Game I, seven, anything can I see what you're saying. If you're the if you're the away team in this situation, all you got to do is feel steal one of the first two, and there's, you're good. There's actually less pressure on you in Game Six when you're down three two versus Game Seven when it's tied three three. True. What did, so much more pressure. What did you guys think about the story? I see Eric's getting us on time. The pitcher for the Astros who was questioned about cheating. And everybody wants to make it a whole bunch of nothing, but the Phillies Maldonado manager that came also. out was like. Hey, if we thought it was cheating, we would have pursued it more. I had a rough day at work. You really want to go on a freaking rant right now? <laughs> we got Remember, about two and a half minutes left, so go on. I got 45 I'm seconds. Yeah. Trevor Valda has been touching his hands, wrist, everywhere the entire year. All right? That guy Facts. is zero. The umpire has checked him every single inning, giving a nice little touch in his hand. Do Take that information what you want. If he was cheating, they would have found something. For okay? fans to continue to think that... People are up to something after umpires have been checking the inside of people's belts for the last two years. It's yeah. just preposterous. And the Maldonado thing, immediately when, uh, who is it, TBS? Yeah. Doing the games? Yeah, Tom Verducci. Immediately when Verducci Scumbag. Imme- uh, reported on that and it came up, he was like, oh, Maldonado using the illegal bat. I was like, why would they do that to Wait. the Astros? They already <laughs> have an, a target on their back. It was barely fading away. They were just getting to this point where it's like, yeah, they're probably a good franchise for them to have this kind of sustained success. And that was years ago. It was 2017, 18. Yeah. Right? Um, and that's front page news. Why would you do that to the Astros? That's <laughs> so messed up as a reporter for them to stir up the pot. And not to mention, so we did some additional it's research. It's going to open up a can of worms. We did some additional do. research on it. So the, the bat was something that Albert Pujols was able to use because it was grandfathered in. It was a clause that the MLB Players Association had allowed players to use who had been using it in 2010. Maldonado started in 2011. Therefore, he was ineligible to use the bat. The bat was not banned for competitive reasons. The bat was banned for player safety reasons. Mm. So no sh- way, shape, or form was that bat a competitive advantage to anyone other than against himself because apparently it's some, sort of, play, it's some sort of player hazard. So again, people need to do their research. And the fact that Verducci did not mention that during the initial broadcast, again, total BS reporting. Slanted. And, um, I'm not. I am. I am consider myself an Astros fan, but I think I've seen the whole Astros cheating scandal quite unbiasedly, and they've really gotten dragged, man. It's it's quite unfair to the way that that the media treated them over the last few years, and the way that at some point, and I think there has been a, a good amount of former players and some baseball analysts have stepped up and said, "Listen, we need to stop saying this." Like 
this is Lucas it's, Giolito it's drawn this out. And, oh, yeah. and then not only and not only that, it was like there are other teams that were included in this report, but for some reason the Astros' name on it is the biggest. It had to be commercialized because baseball is I not still, exciting. I they needed someone, a villain. Yeah, you they need, need it because the Yankees someone, aren't that guy anymore. I heard someone talking about the Altuve buzzer last mm-hmm. week, and I was like, they still that's bring just it spreading up. lies. Yeah. That's but 100% it's 100% always been a lie. But it's something that gets people talking about baseball and gets people mm-hmm. tuning into the games, whether but, it's good so or not. It's messed but, up. but when Pujols in 2021 handed his bat around for the entire Dodgers team to use, we're just not even going to talk about that. Like, nah, because he's all a famer. Using his bat, and but when the Astros, one player, the, the worst hitter in the Astros uses it, which like Drew said, no advantage. We want to blow it up. He also like didn't get any hits in game one, and the Astros lost game one. So again, no competitive advantage. It's always something with the Strohs. But, but people, people, like I said, ignorant fans, they found a fish. small headline and yep. they take it and they stretch it. And it, to us, it really shows who knows what they're talking about and who goes that extra mile. But we um, got to get the dub. We got to get yeah. at least game three. Got to. Win two in Philly. It's getting tight. All right, moving on to basketball. My Nets. Yes, my Nets. Because I love every player on that team. Bless their hearts. They have decided to go without Steve Nash. They have um, parted ways with the two-time former league MVP and former now coach of the Brooklyn Nets, who was there for, I believe, two seasons. This was his third. The Nets were underperforming, as we all know. There had been trials and tribulations, COVID, injuries, this, that, the other, what have you. My question is, who should be? the coach for the Brooklyn Nets. Do you guys have any ideas and then any thoughts about once that coach gets there? What is it going to take to turn around? As far as what it takes to turn it around, I'm really not too sure what all that's going to entail. They do have the, the talent, but it kind of depends on what you think of Ben Simmons. Yeah. Um, but not too many hours after the announcement of the firing of Steve Nash were the rumors of the hiring of Celtics former coach Ime Udoka. Ime. Um, not only Celtics former head coach who took them to the finals last year, but also he was a former assistant with the Nets prior to being a coach with the Celtics. So it does kind of make sense. And if all of his issues were completely like team related and there were some, some rumors of it being somewhat related to somebody in the head office of the Celtics, if you know he was kind of dancing on the toes of, <laughs> of somebody up up in the, the C-suites. I don't dancing know. Dancing with so, somebody's daughter's toes. Something like that. I don't know. So maybe if that was the problem, uh, the Celtics had already granted them permission to speak with him, and, and they are going to allow them to walk freely and no trade or anything like that. They're just going to kind of let it go. So um, looks like Imi Udoka is going to be the head coach. JT, do you have any thoughts on who should be the next Nets coach or – any thoughts about the Nets in particular before I sound off? Because you know I got a point of view on this. So I haven't done a lot of research on who they would replace. I do think it's kind of you know early in the season, kind of premature. Um, you know, if you're going to take last year's you know evidence and translate that to this year, I mean, to be fair, the whole Kyrie Irving situation last year was complete BS, and not Steve Nash's fault. How his vaccination status lets him sit courtside but not play in the game. At home yeah, games. At home it's games. a little bit his fault. At he home was games. digging his feet That's in. That's not Steve Nash's fault. No, it's Tyrese. No, 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 he was yeah, saying yeah, Steve Nash. He was Steve Nash. Nash. He was Steve Nash. Nash. Was saying Steve Nash. Nash. So, yeah, Nash. That's pretty yeah. dumb, but Tyrese we're, what, five, six games into this season already? I mean, I think it, it's, it's an emotional hire because you're looking at the roster thinking this is your best chance to win and we need some kind of a spark to get things going and maybe Steve's not the guy, but... Yeah. I mean, the CNBA at the end of the day, I think coaching plays not as large of a role as it does in other pro sports, um, but that's just me. Thank you for bridging the gap to my point, because I have been following Brooklyn ever since they acquired Kyrie, James Harden, to pair with Kevin Durant. Not to say I saw this coming. When the Nets first hired Steve Nash, I was super excited as a basketball fan. Steve Nash player we all grew up watching, we all love, super talented. Similar when Jason Kidd was hired. Also, he's now coaching Kyrie, a very electric and star-studded point guard. It's going to be a match made in heaven. But then I thought about it and kept listening 
and hearing and watching and I quickly realized it was disaster because it's not that Steve Nash isn't a good coach. I don't know if Steve Nash was a good coach for this roster. And let me put it to you for this comparison. When the Warriors got Steve Kerr and they were able to instantly find success, some people were saying, well, hey, look, that team, they had stars, you know, that was drafted. It was a team, Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson, yeah. I look at it, Steve Kerr had a presence in that locker room. He knew who the leaders were and when things got tough, how to talk to Draymond, how to get through to some of the older veteran players. Steve Nash, not to say that he was out of touch, he just wasn't in touch with this group of players, specifically Kyrie and KD. When Kyrie came out and said, we don't need a coach, months after they got Steve Nash, that told me that, oh shit, in practice, they aren't listening to anything he says. They were more busy trying to have one-on-one -on -one battles between James Harden and Kyrie to prove why James Harden wasn't good enough than actually doing team practices. Kevin Durant, this past summer, demanded a trade if they didn't fire Steve Nash. So everything from Kevin Durant, Kyrie Irving, the whole what have you in Brooklyn, it wasn't gonna work with Steve Nash. I think now that Steve Nash is gone, someone like Ime or even someone like Quinn Snyder, who's had a lot of success in the NBA very recently, I think with Utah uh, as late, to come in there and instill that, hey, we're gonna do it the right way. You may not have jived with Steve Nash's protocol because he was very lax when it came to, hey, if you don't feel like practicing, you don't have to practice. Well, you don't tell that to Kyrie Irving because he's not gonna practice. And of course he's not gonna wanna practice. So maybe this will be the step. I do think the team itself is gonna be happier. You're gonna see them play harder, play a little bit more together because of that. But initially, initially, I was, yeah. I was gonna ask, if you were to compare it to Steve Kerr, it sounds like they have a nucleus problem. Correct. Well, the, this is the other issue. Ben Simmons, like you touched on. Ben Simmons is the wild gonna, card yeah, of this entire creation. Because when they first this and if someone was to say, Oh yeah, Brooklyn got Kyrie, it's like, oh yeah, that's great. But it was they got Kyrie and James Harden. Now we knew what James Harden was when he got there, but the replacement of James Harden for Ben Simmons, if he isn't that defensive guy, it's over. It's over. He has to get you boards. He's got to drive, dribble, penetrate, and he's got to play defense because that's what they're missing. If they don't get that, they have no shot in the playoffs, and Kyrie and KD will probably not be on the Nets next season. So it don't matter who's going to be the coach because it's going to be a complete restart. Like any team that has all that kind of money wrapped up in Ben Simmons who isn't performing and Kyrie Irving who isn't on the floor isn't going to perform. So... I don't know. There's a lot more going on than just Steve Kyrie Nash. is performing though. He's averaging 35 a game through seven games. How many times was he on the floor last year? That was last year. No, no, no. I agree with you. I agree with you. But Kyrie and KD are both averaging over 35 points. This is only the fourth time in NBA history this has ever happened. I think they should have stuck him in his sleep. <sighs> you know. Not I think not punched him. Stuck him with the second. back. Yeah, you know, that's what. Hey, they talked to old players about that. They said if this was back in the 80s, 90s, like on one of those team buses, they would have held him down. He would have got that vaccine. <laughs> bad teammate, man. Hey, That's man. bad teammate. And basketball team's so small. Like, you have a bad egg in there, bad cancer, and the locker room is a lot bigger than on a football team or something like that. Spreads very quickly. We'll have definitely some more NBA talk coming soon. Maybe even an NBA podcast. Don't want to name drop. Don't want to put any on the spot. <coughs> Ruble, maybe? Mm, I don't know. We'll see. All right. Moving on to some football. NFL trade deadline was today, 4 p.m. It is passed because it was 4 p.m. Eastern time, right? So it's already passed. Want to go through some big trades that hit the net. TJ Hawkinson. Drew, this was one of your guys you were pretty heavy on. Gets traded from Detroit to Minnesota, I see. So they traded him in the division. That's right. For a second rounder next year uh, and... Uh, the following year, a fourth rounder and a conditional draft pick that year. Um, not too sure what that means. That's but uh, I was, as a TJ Hawkinson fantasy owner, he was struggling a little bit, so I'm happy to see him go with Kirk Cousins. I know that their um, tight end Smith had gotten injured a few weeks back, so for them just to be able to slip him in uh, and go on a six, were they six and one, seven and one? I mean, they're a great. Yeah, team. six and one, I think. So they're gonna they're gonna be great. He's gonna be great with them. Sucks for Jared Goff. He's gonna miss uh, him over the middle. Sounds like he wasn't really passing to him that much though. 
Um, <laughs> How did? Anyway. What, what does it say for Detroit though? Because I mean, I you, mean, they're one, the, they have one win. What yeah, win? What's it say for I guess them? they're selling. I mean, they're they're talking sell, sellers and buyers. And if we want to talk sellers and buyers, let's talk about the Chicago Bears, who traded. Bo called this. Bo called this a few, few knew, weeks ago on the pod. Yeah, traded away Roquan Smith to Baltimore. He for, announced it NFL Week One for a second and a fifth in 2023. Chicago then took that second pick and sent it to Pittsburgh for Chase Claypool. Huge. That's huge. That's a great move. That's huge. Just for them to, to take that pick and then just send it off real quick. I mean, they got, they basically went from Roquan Smith to Chase Claypool and got a fifth round pick for it. This is my only, this is my only trepidation. So, but it's interesting, like for them to be buyer sellers, like that was an interesting choice. I feel like Chicago wanted to make that move all along. Like, he wanted a trade prior to week one. Why didn't they do that then? Maybe Pittsburgh was reluctant to give up Claypool at that time, now that they know more than they did. Maybe they didn't know what they wanted to trade for. Maybe they thought yeah. maybe they thought that they want to let him eat a little bit on defense, get some good stats, and then his value would go up. He ate against the and then Pats you'd that wait, night. And you'd wait for this weekend or this two-week window when teams are starting to make these moves. My, so, my. I don't know. I think, it, I think it actually might be easier to make a trade in this – Week or, two, the, week or two then prior to the season because you wait for teams to have injuries and then it's like, all right, where can we slip them in? Everyone's buying at point L and O, right? So my, my biggest take on the Claypool trade was I think that the Bears are trying to give Justin Fields a fair evaluation compared to other guys in the league by getting him a true number one. Um, comparing, like, like I saw a tweet that went viral. It was like Joe Burrow was this before he got Jamar Chase. Mm-hmm. And then there's like two other guys that like around that age, like t- second, third year guy. Oh, Tua was this before getting um, Tyreek. Tyreek. Yeah. And it's just like maybe that's just the comparison because eventually they're going to have to extend Justin Fields and extend his contract before year four. So I mean, the best receiver he's played with is Mooney, Darnell Mooney, I guess. Who is not a true number one on 25 teams. So who would you take right now before we go to the break just doing this thought exercise cuz week 7 you know people are making trades Justin Fields has shown flashes we talked about his inability to throw the ball for them to win but he can throw who would you rather He's made strides the last few weeks right who would you rather have Justin Fields or Zach Wilson Justin Fields why I think passing, they're kind of at the same level, and then you throw in the scrambling aspect. Football IQ to me, too. Yeah? Just I think, I think school, Justin just being is a from very Ohio, smart football Being player. from Ohio State versus a program like BYU, he's yeah. just, he started out miles ahead. He's just been around good people. people. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a pretty open and close. Because even he was at Georgia even before Ohio State. Watching the, the Jets pass game this weekend, Zach Wilson made some ugly plays. I'm man. nervous for the, the Jets. Sam Donald seeing ghosts kind of thing. I mean, he just he was overthrown, underthrown. The balls were getting picked, left, right, tipped. It, I mean, it was a bad situation. Zach Wilson draft stock shot up completely because during the COVID year, BYU was an independent, so they didn't have any scheduled games because everyone went conference only. And so what BYU did was play like four or five FCS teams. So his numbers were completely inflated. He was in the Heisman talks and it created all this draft talk about him that you really didn't have before on him. It was like his fourth year. It was a year COVID year too. Yeah, like they were playing, like they, the one game they played against someone decent, they played Coastal Carolina. It was crazy. Like both, they both had a different game. They got canceled four days before the game started. They call each other like, hey, let's both play each other. No one's sick. All right, cool. See you there on Friday. They played. Zach Wilson had a bad game. BYU lost, mm. but his draft stock stayed high because Colston was also like a top ten. Yeah, and it yeah. was just. I think he's been overrated from the get go. And Fields has been through hell, hot and high water, but that makes you better. So, did the Texans trade Brandon Cooks? No, no I was going to just bring that up. I didn't want to move on without talking about that. So they Why? Texans really didn't do anything. And then a couple other things that maybe we should talk about. Uh, Bradley Chubb to. Uh, from Denver to Miami, also Jeff Wilson to Miami from San Francisco. That's, That's huge. Me. That's um, actually pretty Calvin big. Calvin Ridley off the one-year sussy in Atlanta to Jacksonville, so they're stocking up for next year. Mm. Uh, Naheem Hines from the Colts is on his way to Buffalo, so they got a little bit better at the running back position which Devin Singletary was having to take on the majority of the workload. What's weird is Naheem Hines is a receiving back. 
Like he is not a running back. Well, so it single, picks up single Zach Terry Moss runs too. So I think single Terry runs. Okay. I think that's kind of the idea. They like sent Zach Moss. Yeah. 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 No, 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 the Colts picked up Zach Moss. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying that when they when they send off Hines, they're not really losing sleep. Like yeah, they have one rental for another. Correct. Um, let's go a little bit over well, here. No, the reason why I bought that out was the criticism for Buffalo so far is that they're a good team, but they run away from the run too quickly. S- Singletary runs the ball, so I think Nah uh, Naheem Hines will be able to will be able to to catch out of the backfield. Yeah, wanted to mention that Roquan Smith trade to um, Baltimore. Baltimore. It's gonna be nice. They already have a stingy defense. You add another playmaker like that. I think for them, it's the the standing of their league or their division rather, yeah. and it's, everyone's still kind of in it for the AFC North. So they're they're as in it as I mean Cincinnati's disappointing, Cleveland slipping. I don't know if Deshaun's going to be able to pull them back, mm-hmm. and Pittsburgh's terrible. So yeah. it's Baltimore's division to lose at this point. I'd love to see Joe Burrow make a run at it. Every week I pick him, but. Nothing happens. They got to get healthy real quick. JT, you got anything trade wise before we catch this break? Um, yeah, I was just shocked that they, you know, got rid of the the Niners sent Jeff Wilson down to Miami. I know they picked up McCaffrey, but as injury prone as McCaffrey's been, I mean, you would think you, you, it seemed like you were going away from wanting uh, Debo to be this, you know, split athlete in the backfield in the slot, and it just. I just feel like you're a couple plays away from going back to the problem that you just solved. So that part I didn't really understand. Um, I don't really know what they got for it too, though. So that's kind of blindly speaking. But um, they got a lot of draft picks. They got for 20- Jeff Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry, Christian McCaffrey. No, no, no for Jeff Wilson. Uh, Jeff Wilson was just a 2023 fifth rounder. So yeah, okay, a, so a bag of chips. That's why I feel like. That's kind of a stunning trade to me. Everything else on there seems like it pretty much checks seems out. Seems like if anything, that's probably like a like a money dump. But like, they're not paying him anything. I don't know. I, they got rid of it. <laughs> so I'm looking here, and not to pivot so quickly, but Brandon Cooks just still on my mind. I could have swore we were going to unload him. They were in talks with Dallas just hours before the trade deadline. It didn't yeah, happen. Yeah, Cowboys. What's the plan? Why? This is Cooks last year? It's got, or I think he may have one, one more. He could, yeah, he has one more year. Well, then maybe the plan is what they offered wasn't what we thought he was worth for, you know, a 24 game rental, if you will, whatever the math is on that. Um, and we, I guess we'd have to assume that John Menchie comes back next year um, full swing. So I guess when that happens, they'll feel comfortable that Menchie would kind of step in as that slot. And then for Cooks um, with Nico Collins on the outside. Um, but yeah, I mean the Texans are in no win mode. Eventually, I think eventually they'll make the trade. It's just not today. Yeah, yeah. I just hope, and I think Brandon Cooks. The reason why he's unhappy is because he knows, like in anything, all it takes is one injury, and I, now the value. Well, he's like been one head injury away from like the Looney Shack. So. He's been yeah. doing good for a while. Well, like, he yeah, stayed away from good. Uh, knock on some wood right <laughs> here. Yeah, that's my guy. He got knocked out in the first quarter of that Super Bowl against the Eagles. Would have been a whole lot different. Tell Nick Foles I said that. Yeah. But um, Fairly young guy, too. Yeah. Still 29. I, I feel bad for him, though. I know he wanted to get out of here. And yeah. He's probably been counting down the days. And he's like, shit, dude. I mean, anybody. He's seven more months here in Houston. Green he's also, I have a Brandon Cooks jersey, bro. Yeah. I love Brandon Cooks. So, you know, it's... It sucks, but I i mean, I like seeing him in Houston at what, the same time. So One more guy that I have that I'm good, Dan. surprised didn't get traded and who was also very vocal about not being traded, Kareem Hunt. Um, oh, kind, yeah. kind of been talking about him for a while. He the solo job. Yeah, he'll get a shot. He'll get a shot. Um, I think he works better in the system that they're in. Yeah. That's what I bet you Chubb is thinking, that yeah, Chubb is like staying. He wants starter money. That's yes. what it is. Because he used to get starter money in Kansas City, then he had legal trouble. The Browns threw him a bone. I was about to say, this guy is no, this, no ground to stand on. Yeah, well, hey, you better be goddamn grateful <laughs> that he has a job. He done molly his his last girl. but like, uh, We've seen how they treat domestic violence. Like He's just lucky there wasn't enough evidence about him. I thought he was going to end up in Jacksonville, but ETN has been proving that he is going to be there to stay. I know there were questions. Yeah. But that's all we got for the first half. We'll be back right after this. Oh, 
first wanted to mention, hit up our Instagram. That's at Red Dot Radio Inc. That's who uh, presents this whole podcast thingy majig. Go give us a follow, send us a message. If you want to hit us up on email, that's Red Dot Radio Inc. at gmail.com. Ask us any questions. If you want to join the show, listen to us, watch us do the show, hit us up. But we have Red Dot Stats hitting the scene. We are going to be putting out a lot of statistical whatever have you, whether it's just random stats, research studies that we perform looking at growth over time, changes in behavior, uh, how to set up your fantasy lineup better. We are here to serve you. So with that being said, I wanted to mention a cool stat for you guys. It's kind of trivia, but it's related to football. Okay. All right. So only three players in NFL history have caught a pass over the age of 40. Who are those three? And I'll give you a hint. One of them is Brett Favre. I'm glad you said that one because no one would have guessed yep. that one. Yep. Um, I'm going to say one of them is Tom Brady. You are right. The third one is probably the easiest of the three. All right, give us the second thing. Is He's there, a receiver. Randy Moss? Nope. He didn't play that long. Jerry Rice played yep, that That's it. Jerry Rice. Oh, that's right. Jerry Rice. He was a Denver Bronco for a stint there. Brett Favre and Tom Brady. Think about that. What a weird Brady list. Like when we were kids. Mm-hmm. Red Dot Stats. Better catch on. I love trivia like that. Keep that coming. Charlie. Oh, yeah. We're getting to your new. We're getting to your new. But we got to talk about some NFL coaching carousel drama. Like the Colts. For sports. You know, I love it. Offensive coordinator Marcus Brady was fired today. By his boss, Frank Reich. Eric, your team, the Colts, going through some trials and tribulations. Not looking too hot. We think Frank Reich is next to get fired. Should he be fired? I think that was probably the move that should have happened today. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think him firing the offensive coordinator is only buying himself another two months or so. So maybe this gets Frank Reich to the end of the season, but... They're not able to turn it around. I think that, I mean, there's, you can talk about the fact that they've had a revolving door at quarterback for the last five years from Jacoby Brissett to Phillip Rivers to Carson Wentz and Matt Ryan and um, Sam Ellinger. Sam, I'm missing one also. Uh, maybe Andrew Lux last year was really wasn't that long ago. It was like four or five years ago. Um, he kind of just bailed on the team. Yeah, it was probably Andrew <laughs> Luck straight to Brissett. Um, but anyway. I think part of that is is his fault because he brought Carson Wentz over there. He put his he stuck his neck out for Carson Wentz, so he's got kind of got to be held responsible for that. You you set the whole franchise back a year by pulling him away from Philly. That was a trade, wasn't it? Not just a signing. Correct. So not only did you trade, you then they gave like a second you round sent away something. assets for it. So. To a certain extent, you got to be held liable for your decisions. So, I think Frank Wright only bought himself a few more months. Um, this is a classic technique where coaches buy themselves more time by either let, let's say you know remember when Bill O'Brien was oh I'm firing myself from play calling duties. It's like okay, just give me another two months. I'll try to figure it out. Yeah, that's what they're saying. So, it's a joke. Um, it's pretty messed up, someone else's job. But, I mean, if Frank Reich were to get fired at the end of the season, that offensive coordinator probably would have got fired anyway. So, they would have cleaned house. Very true. I think it's a very scapegoat kind of move. We're going to find someone to blame. Um, and I wonder if this was more Mark Mark Reich or uh, Jim, Rick. Mark Rick or J- J- Jim Irsay. Um because on that end, it's like, who's trying to protect who? Is Ursay trying to protect his organization in a free agent stint? Or is Rick trying to, you know, protect himself to get another job somewhere else at the end of the year? Um, but like Drew kind of said, either way, at the end of the year, that OC's going to be gone. It doesn't really matter. But <clears throat> there's not enough talent offensively to really blame anyone on that coaching staff, in my opinion, because they've struck out left and right revolving door quarterbacks there's no way you can build around that when you don't know who the hell that guy's going to be that guy has to be consistent so that's the one position that has to be consistent. you also have to have consistency within the offensive coaching staff where you're not having playbook turnover 
And cool. unless you're creating a situation where you're having to reteach mm -hmm. every eight months, nine months, whenever OTAs come around. So I don't know. That's, yeah. that's, that's not a good way to run your franchise. Currently has a 40, 32, and 1 record with the Colts. <clears throat> Just one a little time. bit. Run that back. 40, 32, and 1. So that's a Colts. winning record. Yeah, still winning. And he's definitely had some playoff wins. Um, one thing to note, I think, I think he's going to be fired eventually. And the reason why I think he's going to be fired is Carson Wentz was one of those decisions like letting go of D-Hop, where you brought him on and then that set you back. Like, we let go of D-Hop, then we lose Deshaun, then we have to rebuild. And you got to hold Bill O'Brien responsible for that decision. Plus, yeah. looking at his assistants, Matt Uberflus, Uberflus, Uber, Uberflus yeah. who's with Denver, Nick Chicago. Sirianni, he's with Chicago. or Chicago, Nick Sirianni, who's with the Eagles. Yeah. Those guys are pretty, I mean, we had our questions about uh, Eberflus at the beginning of the season because of some of his decisions, but Nick Sirianni's good. They scored some points against a very good Cowboys defense last weekend. So, it was. It did I get mean, a little exciting. Uh, they beat the Patriots. So the last few weeks. I mean, it's Chicago, his first year. Chicago. I mean, like I often bring They're up. Coming along. I often Correct. bring up Big Cat uh, on Parcel. He's a Chicago fan. This morning he was. He said, "I'm a happy guy right now because things are trending up." Yeah. No one gave Chicago a shot against Dallas. That's that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Frank Wright, your seat's warming up, buddy. But you already know that. I think that. it's been a little while. The seat warmer's already on. He knows that. He's looking for the seat coolest. Who you got is up next. I see the Thursday night game, which we will be at. If you're going to be there, say what's up. We'll be near the end zone, walking around, drinking a little bit. Philly is coming into Houston to play the Texans. We'll save that one for Brady. I'm praying he chooses Houston. Looks like that paper's closest to the door, but... The first game I see, Indianapolis Colts traveling to New England. New England, favored by minus five and a half. Who you got? I have the Patriots. Uh, quarterback situation is very unstable. During, oh, Lord. During the Jets game this weekend, I was screaming to Eric, and he was just kind of like laughing at me like, what's going on here? Because <laughs> I like put Zappy in because yeah. the Pats were not moving the ball in the first half. They ended up doing okay and, and the defense held the Jets to 10 points. Um, but the offense just looks a little bit more fun with Zappy in it. You know, it's there's a couple things where he just gets, he take, takes his three-step drop when he throws the ball where Mac takes his three-step drop and he doesn't like it and he, he tucks and he, you know, he scrambles and he maybe takes a step up and he steps right into a guy. So, um, I'd like to see Zappy out there. They're giving Mac the respect that a first round pick deserves. But that is the only reason why he's out. That he's isn't, still in that isn't something. Hold on. That isn't something that Belichick typically does. He's not someone to say, we're playing you for a first round pick. So at this point in time, I'm going to believe that Bill thinks he's the better quarterback. I don't, I'm not a quarterback guru. <laughs> I like watching Easy Bailey Zappi. <laughs> I like watching Bailey Zappi. The team looks more fun with Bailey Zappi. Mac is probably a smarter quarterback at this moment in time, which is why he's the starter. Yeah. All that to be said, Pats will cover five and a half with the Colts coming to town. Old team. Ellinger's not good. Ellinger versus Belichick. All you need to know. Last week, Belichick versus Zach Wilson. All you needed to know. Yep. JT, who you got? Yeah, I mean, typically teams are more fun to watch than they do have Bailey Zappi. Just ask Houston Baptist. They ain't done shit since. <laughs> Houston Christian, JT. Oh, yeah, yeah they did switch it the name. HCU. My bad, my bad. My alma, alma mater. Um, I got the Patriots covering five and a half. Hmm. Uh, Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, Brian Hoyer, don't matter. Pats and seven. <laughs> They're going to cover five and a half. It's going to be easy. You, you think so? Colts are dog shit, man. I think the Colts are going to cover I do think the Colts are going to cover, and this is why. It ain't Sam Ellinger. We, correct. It's their defense, and more specifically, New England's offense. I can see a situation where, like Drew just mentioned, the first half, New England struggling, and then by the third quarter, finally, Mac Jones get taken out. Give me, give me a score, Bo. 17-13. I was just going to say something 17-13. Like yeah, because Indy is just like good a, enough like defensively like to hold them. 16-20 kind of thing. I, yeah. I could see Indy winning 13-3. Indy winning? No, no, no. At, through the first half. 13-3. Okay, okay. 
and everything just looking Sounds down. Scary, and though, then New but... England scoring two touchdowns in the second half. So do you think Indy win. covers or do you think the Pats win? Indy's going to cover. But Indy's Pats going to Pats going to win. Okay. All yeah. right. Next game, another noon game. Chargers going to Atlanta. Atlanta, dogs at three and a half. Damn, this is going to be a good game. I have no faith in the Chargers. Who y'all got? I got Atlanta. Yeah. I got Atlanta covering. Easy. We all got the Falcons. They're yeah, at home. Yeah, I think that's really the thing, man. It's They've had so many troubles at wide receiver. Is, is Keenan Allen back yet? It's, it's, it's Does he even want to be back? Because I don't think he Eckler's gets along back, with the though. coach. Oh, yeah, he's back. Eckler's going to be playing. I don't think, I think he likes he Brandon Staley. I like Eckler, man. He's Chargers are playing off the bye. Eckler's good on fantasy. He is. How does how is a team with a defensive coach so aggressive on fourth downs? They are like synonymous. Is he defensive? He is. He's a defensive guy. Trust and, his defense. Damn. Good reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask for his own defense. Yeah, he does Asked have an answer. Derwin James, Bosa. He's got a crew. And uh Cleo Mack. They're solid. Next game, Miami. Going to Chicago. Chicago, dogs at plus five. I like Miami in this one. Miami's been rolling. Gasicki's been rolling. Hill and Waddle have been rolling. Waddle and Hill, yeah. Dude, they create. Hill is so good. They, they just stack up the, their offense. Miami, like if you look you. at their production, just on the, those two guys, it's probably like, I don't know, 72%. Didn't I tell you? It, of it's the simple. Total offense is just through those two guys. You don't even have to throw, Drew. You could play quarterback for Miami. Just give it to them. They're gonna get you five That's yards. That's whole argument easy. against Tua, but then I, he's making me look dumb. He's made some good passes. He looks good. Yeah. And his presence is from the left too. I, I'll, I'll eat. I'll eat it on that. He's he's made some good passes the last few weeks. He's still frail Coming though. Off this woozy game. Yeah, he's still What's one concussion pick? away. My pick on this game. I was waiting for you, JT. I have Miami underlined. Not so bad. Uh, see, <clears throat> I like the Bears covering five at home. At home. You had chose Miami. I might have switched to the Bears. We got, we're getting to that point. Just of the to year. cover or to win? Yeah, cover. The cover. Uh, I'm waiting for some more bear weather. Yeah, if, I mean Miami is a team that like once December rolls around, their defense is bad. Yeah, Miami's. I know Melvin Gore, uh, Melvin Ingram, and then we're getting all types of penalties. Like they won yesterday. Um, or Sunday, but uh, it wasn't the cleanest game for Miami. Sean, I'll give you a quick, uh, if we can throw it back to our segment earlier. Which of the traded players that we mentioned do you think is going to make the biggest impact? He's going to make the biggest impact. Yeah, we just, let's talk about the big three. TJ Hawkinson, Rokon Smith, Smith, Chase Claypool. Let's throw CMC in there. Yeah. Just because that was last week doesn't mean we shouldn't be talking about him. I think the big... I don't think TJ Hawkins is going to be really an impact, to He's be honest. slide right in for Irv Smith. Irv Smith got hurt yeah. last weekend, immediately new tight end. I think it's a great move for them. Uh, yeah, I think they're still going to be formidable. I don't think he's, like, so much better than the last tight end where it's like, oh, my gosh, they got a freaking, you know, world beater. But in terms of which... I mean, you look at these three teams, Minnesota, Baltimore, Chicago, which one's going to be the best at the end of the year? It's probably going to be Minnesota. I think, yeah, Minnesota's definitely going to be the best, but I but wouldn't... You said impact. Which player yeah, I was going to say, I think, Ro- I think Roquan Smith <clears throat> going to... Because I'm going to be honest. that defense was so bad. J- the the uh, Chase, Pool, Chase Claypool pick is great, but Claypool... This is one of the reasons why I think Pittsburgh was so reluctant to let him go. He's only really good with 50-50 balls. I think it's the next year type thing. Yeah, like, he doesn't do enough that makes me think, like, oh, yeah, Claypool, he's going to dominate this week. Like, this upcoming week, he's, no, it's going to take some time. He's an athlete, huge, fast, but, I mean, if he was that good, why wasn't he making plays in Pittsburgh? So quarterback. Exactly. I mean, when he had been throwing the ball up to him, it looked great. Man, but Justin good. Fields, Ben's, years not, years Ben's years not a quarterback now. either. Hey. He was. A, ugh, well, we were exactly. Start, we were hoping on Ben Roethlisberger. It would get better, but ben, yeah, I would say Baltimore is probably going to have ben the was best. About two years past his yeah. retirement. I think Bradley Chubb's going to be a big pickup for Miami. Mm. <clears throat> they're kind of lacking an edge rusher. Yeah, they're on that defense. Not good. Defense not good. Um, their base D has been pretty much holding people up and let linebackers fill the gaps. That's why they need to score the game. thirty-five points a game. Yeah. So I, I think that will be a big impact for them. That's a good call. Yeah. 
that's going to be a good one because, uh, yeah, you're right. Miami has Melvin Ingram, now Bradley Chubb, plus some good DBs. No, nah, they just, I think, have a few DBs. Next game. Oh, did you pick You picked, uh, Chicago to yeah. cover, not to win? No, Bears. Carolina. Oh, I have a thought for you before this game, thinking about my boy P.J. Walker. Who would you rather have? Davis Mills or P.J. Walker? I want P.J. now. I think I want P.J. P.J. is so much more sexier than Davis Mills. He I'm may sorry. throw one pick, but he's going to get you at least three touchdowns. I mean, Mills might be better, but P.J. Walker is just so much sexier. <sighs> yes, it's kind of like his, his point with Zappy. Like, it's just so much more fun watching that P.J. Walker play. That throw he threw to get them the dub this past weekend. I like P.J. Walker a lot. He's a fun quarterback. Are they going to cover against Cincinnati? XFL legend. Yes. I think they are. I think they are. Cincinnati at minus seven. Who y'all got? I agree, Sean. I think Carolina is going to get better and better as the year goes on. They may still lose every game they play, but I think they're going to get better. Wait, Sean picked the Bengals? No, okay. Carolina. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you picked the Bengals. Nah. He said he agreed. I got confused. Sorry. I'm picking the Bengals. You are going to pick the Bengals. I can pick the Bengals. I continue to pick the Bengals. I continue to be wrong. I'm waiting for them to do their thing. There's going to be a game. I, ooh, JT, we had a nice fantasy matchup last night. <laughs> How long did it Dude, go? Dude, that was bull. I was with that T. Higgins was touchdown it? at the, the end. Bull I need, T. Higgins touchdown. I, was, I just made me think. I was thinking T. Higgins needs some touchdown passes. It's and that like, just made me think. In the, about in the, we had a tight man, JT had a tight The worst part night. about it, there's an NFL Twitter page called, like, I don't know, NFL Fantasy. And they just put, like, fantasy memes of what's going on. It showed that highlight. And it said, somebody just lo- uh, won on this play. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that would suck for that Pretty person. <laughs> Check fantasy. T. Higgins at 30 points. I'm like, somebody just end me right now. <laughs> when things couldn't get worse, like they do. My two and five team or whatever the hell they are. Just, Y'all are struggling. Jamar, oh, it's been worse. Jamar's out. He Tyler out. Boyd's been balling. Mixing T. Higgins well. balling. I hope Joe can get it going. They're on a, They're due for a get right game. Let's go Cincinnati minus seven. Yeah, Carolina's got to be thinking to themselves, you know, what are we going to do at quarterback? Because they have three legitimate quarterbacks on their roster. Sam Darnold, who's maybe not so legitimate, Baker Mayfield, and P.J. Walker. They only have one quarterback with a championship, and that's P.J. Walker with an XFL title. Houston Roughnecks! We're back, by the way. They officially announced it. The Rock. He did not announce all the XFL teams. There's eight teams. San Antonio's got a team. There's a couple other. Dallas, Seattle. There's a couple. Yeah, Seattle's Tampa, like the, the Sea Snakes. I like the Orlando. XFL. It's something to put on. San Antonio on. Brahmas. The Brahmas. It's like a, it's yeah. like a bull. It's kind yeah. of a lame name. But. Yeah, I looked it up. I don't like it. That was by the Rock's choice. Next game. Excuse me. Green Bay going to Detroit. Tough one. This is going to be a very interesting game because Green Bay lost again. Not looking good. Did Tampa lose again too? Tampa? Or did Tampa not play this past week? About Detroit. No, no, no. I'm just thinking we had talked about Tampa, Green Bay and Tampa, yeah, Tampa last Tampa, week. Tampa lost on Thursday to the To, to Baltimore. The, to so Ravens, yeah. Right? Both teams we talked about last week, both coming off losses. Old quarterbacks. Green Bay, are they gonna be able to do it against Detroit? This should be their get right game. I have Aaron Rodgers on an F U game. Mm-hmm. Um F you to the front office for not getting me anybody. I'm going to go out and do it myself and prove why you guys pay me so much money. That doesn't really prove anything except for the fact that they didn't need to get him anybody. Um, but he's going to be pissed off. So I'm taking Packers minus three and a half. Go, Pat, go. Minus three and a half. I'm going to take Detroit. I mean, Detroit, they just lost Hawkinson also. I mean, Amon Ross St. Brown's been in and out. He's kind of getting hurt, like. DeAndre Swift's been in and out, but the running, their running backs have been awesome. That's DeAndre what I'm Smith Detroit. and Jamal Williams are awesome this year. I hope that I think I think things can get ugly for Detroit's coaching staff. I'm worried about Coach Glenn. Hell, I'm worried about our our boy, the head coach, Dan Campbell. You know, this they got like you said, they have a lot of good so players. Why are you picking them? Because they need a win, and they're at home. You know, you're in Detroit. It's getting cold outside. You're not trying to. Go anywhere on Sunday and catch an L. It's already an L. I don't think you're going to get it from Rodgers. They're going to pray. I'm going to go with Detroit. Okay. Next game that 
is a crazy ass spread. Big Buffalo number. going to the Jets plus thirteen are the Jets. Woo! I'm gonna take Buffalo to actually wipe them. I think things are gonna get worse for Zach Wilson. My dad called it. Zach Wilson's not the guy. Maybe they should put Joe Flacco in there. Maybe. That's funny. Uh, Flacco's just a funny guy <laughs> to think about, man. It's just like, what year I'm is it? A picture of him on the end of the bench just smiling with his ring. Like. I'm picturing the lights going out in the Superdome <laughs> for that Super Bowl. Um, I also have Buffalo. I think they're kind of due to just wax a team. Even though it's in the Meadowlands, I mean, it's not that's not like it's something that really scares Buffalo. It's they're probably I don't even know if that they probably fly from Buffalo to Manhattan. Honestly, yeah. you think Naheem Hines makes an impact? Um, First, I don't game. know if it's that big of a deal, but it's to me it's it's he doesn't just, have to. It's just they yeah, it doesn't have impact. to. It's just they're they're a better roster. Stephon Diggs is, has really proven to be like. Probably a top two wide receiver. Top I three think. for sure. Top three for sure. Just, just this year. For sti- mm-hmm. like sti- I'd say last year too. Stats yeah. wise, uh, Devontae Adams last year, but yeah. this year dude, Devontae ain't doing anything. Correct. Cooper Cup's um, still up there though. Cooper Cup this year not doing as much. Okay. Uh in the last two years I'd say For sure top three. For yeah, sure. Yeah, easy. Three. Easy conversation. So um they're gonna continue to do what they do. Jared Allen gonna or Josh Allen, Jared Allen. Josh <laughs> Allen gonna continue to do what he does. Zach Wilson can continue to do what he does, and that yeah. is throw to the ball, throw the ball to the team uh, wearing a different colored jersey than his. So we are going to take Buffalo minus thirteen. The Jets, <sighs> go JT. Sorry, no, no go, you're go, right. Go the Jets, Jets go could on. win this game. Nah, I didn't want to go. I thought you were going win. different direction. You know, they're not going to cover. Are but, you getting confused about their hype from the earlier games? No, they didn't beat anyone good. I Sean. know, but it's like the recipe was there. You play foundational defense. You run the ball. Like you tell your quarterback, stop, think, don't do that. Sit down, dummy. And it's like it works. But now he, he thinks he's cute. Away. So he's treat to, Zach Wilson like he's a dog. Treat he him like a dog. He got that dog in he him. He needs to be boring. He said it. He needs to play boring. He'd be trying to He's get a exciting. boring white bread Mormon he boy. He doesn't like throwing the ball out of bounds because it's boring. Exactly. It's like, bro, that's the that's, you're supposed to throw out of bounds. That's why he won't be there for long. JT, Buffalo, the Jets. This line at 13 is ratty. That's a lot this of This line points. at 13 is telling you, hey, the Jets are still a good team. Remember that 5-2 and two team from a couple weeks 13's ago? 13's not a good team. What do you want the spread to be, 17? I want the spread no, to be no, no, 10. No. Ratty. Well, can you let me damn this? I don't understand when you're saying ratty. <laughs> I think it's ratty because they're trying to bait everyone into taking the Jets to cover 13. I'm with you guys. I think the Bills are going to kick the ever-living shit out of them in the Meadowlands. Yeah. I think by 2.15 p.m. that stadium is going to be 25% full like it's damn COVID year because they're going to run them out the damn stadium. And what's uh, crazy is this is supposed to be a game for the division if Brees Hall never goes out. If Zach Wilson and his crazy mother loving ass can't get it right, man, give them all the fountain of youth. The Bills are better. They're gonna walk in this game and say they're still the Jets. But they're, uh, yeah, you're not wrong. They may win by twenty. The Jets aren't what they're. You know, we say you are what your roster says you are, but they're not because their roster says they're five and three. But the teams that they beat were the Browns and the Steelers and uh, the Dolphins without Tua. <laughs> yeah. And the Packers, which was surprising. And then you beat the Broncos, who suck. Those are, but you say suck. You say the Broncos suck. Why do the Packers not suck? They're about they, the they, same. They the same issues. The Those Broncos. are like the Packers I, do suck. Okay. The, the, well, the the Broncos, the Packers, and you, who was the first you're one? You're kind of classifying the Packers out of that group like a good win. I'm like, I don't think so. Well, the, the fact that it was 27 to 10 is a good win. The Dolphins without two sure, items. Sure, you beat anybody by 17 points. It's a good win in the NFL. Yeah. yeah. But who was the Cleveland? That Cle- Cleveland is better than their record says. That's a fact. What are they like? Four wins now. Four and four, maybe. They should be at least six and two. There was two games where Brissett threw them out of the game, but yeah, you're you're right. The Jets are on a better. Browns are three and five. Three and five. They haven't won in a while. They have. They though they won last night. Yeah, they beat the they beat the Bengals like thirty two thirteen. Prior to that, they yeah. have not won in a while. It's been a rough. Rough stretch. But a team who it hasn't been rough for, the Minnesota Vikings, who now have TJ Hawkinson going to Washington, trying to take a, 
take on Taylor Heineke. He's going to start again, huh? Has to. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Carson Wentz, that's it. You're out. He should, yeah, I think I was. Wasn't I? I love Heineke. You called it. He's exciting. Washington plus three and a half. Who y'all got covering? I love Heineke for what he did in the XFL, but I think this is an easy game. Vikings cover three and a half on the road. Skull, skull, skull like that? Disrespect Heineke at home? I'm going to go with Washington to cover three and a half. I think that half is going to help him. Because this is three and a half, that right? Half, that's not the one that, that's three. That half is... I think it may you, help That makes you think about it. Because I'm thinking, I think Washington can play it close, force Minnesota to have to run the ball. Dalvin Cook will still get oh, his no, two they have to the ball, Cook. Yeah, oh, They'll still get his two. But it'll at least <laughs> slow the game down enough to where it's in reach. Drew? I have Minnesota. I don't think it's going to be a problem for them whatsoever. Mm. Uh, and I've kind of been up and down with Washington, and there's been a few games where I snuck out their their win. Um, this is not that weekend. It's going to be Vikings all day, I think. They're, they're rolling, man. They're I just rolling. want y'all Kirk Cousins is becoming cool I love somehow. It. I love it. I He's just like want y'all to know. He's the guy in the league. I have no faith in Minnesota at all. If the playoffs were to start today... I'd still pick Minnesota to lose their first playoff game. I'm telling well, it you. Depends on who they be playing. I'm, a, I'm telling you right. I'm they the, only, better, the only who's team better, who's better than them in the, the NFC. I don't, team you can I don't say. care. I don't care who's better than them in the NFC. If they go 16 and one, I'm still gonna predict that they lose their first playoff. I gotta see it, JT. I gotta see Kirk Cousins win in the playoffs. Myself. 16 and one. That's six. That's 17 games right there. That's what I'm saying. 16, one, seven. Yeah, 17. But it's 18 game season. Right? No, so there's a bond. Games, 17? Or 18, 18 weeks. 18 weeks, sorry. So 15 weeks, whatever it is. It would be 18th game yeah. for them. I can't see them winning in the playoffs. What I'm saying is when things get tight and it's a must-win game, I am definitely betting against Kirk Cousins. Until he put me wrong. You're thinking of, of, of Zimmer Cousins. That's you, who you're thinking of. I must be. I know I know Justin Jefferson. This boy's rejuvenated. I know Dalvin Cook. I know TJ Hawkinson. the depths of the ocean. I know Kirk Cousins very well. He's let me down before. I don't even pick him on fantasy. Scratch that. Minnesota. I like the Vikings. They're 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 fun. I like them all year, and I like them even more with Hawkinson. So <sighs> they make me so nervous. Nah. All right, the Rams going to He's Jacksonville. The only, that's the yeah, only they make you nervous because you're picking Washington. That's why. Well, it's it's only rookie Cousins. Co- that's the only rookie coach who's been doing like yeah. great this year. Well, they were, were they last year six and ten or something like that. Not good. Yeah, they were not good last year, but their defense failed them more than they had in the past. They usually have a pretty stymie. Ain't failing them right now. Correct, and they do have a new coach. But I'm saying the defense won't be the problem. It's gonna be the quarterback. We'll save that for another day. Rams traveling to Jacksonville. Jacksonville <laughs> plus one. Raiders. Oh, Raiders. Sorry. No. LV. No. no, no, no. No, 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 I, I said Rams. I should have yeah, said no, Raiders. No, yeah, no, oh. you're good. I, said, I saw LV and thought it was LA. So the Raiders are going to Jacksonville. I was wondering why. It is still weird to see LV on stuff, right? right? Like, Even though they're still the Raiders. Like, I hear people call them the LA Raiders all the time. I think that the Raiders, oh, Derek Carr got me 1.94 points, and I still somehow so won in fantasy. So bad. The Raiders need to get it together. Josh McDaniels, what's going on? I don't know, man. It's been bad. Why aren't they giving the ball to my boy, who scored like three touchdowns? Josh Jacobs? The week before. What happened to him? I don't know, dude. They couldn't move the ball. They could not get past half field until a couple minutes left. And that wasn't even Derek Carr. That was Jared Stidham. Is that coaching or is that players? I think it's play call. That's a combination, too. If if Stidham's in the game, then the twos and threes are in the game, too. Well, it's going to be a good matchup. Peterson and Lawrence versus McDaniel and Carr. I got the, the Raiders bouncing back and taking it on the road in Jacksonville. Mm. It is a pick game. They, I, they're they the better team. I have Jacksonville at home. I think oh. just, just being home is going to make the difference. They're so bad, dude. I like We continue to pick the Raiders, and they continue to lose. So yeah. I'm, just, I'm not going to do it. I got to yeah. pick the Raiders. They got to get it right. I'll pick Jacksonville. What's uh, Derek Carr's contract looking like? Is it out of the... He's got too money. Could he go to... Could he come... No, He's I know got they got money. Devontae Adams, but... Could Houston make a play for him? No, he got money. Houston's waiting waiting for the draft. He's getting paid, man. I'm nervous for the draft. The afternoon games. Seattle traveling to Arizona. 
Arizona favored by two. This is a tough one for me. Did Seattle win again? Yep. I think so. Seattle won again. They beat the Giants. Yep, they beat the mm-hmm. Giants. By like 14. Yep. So Seattle is <clears throat> serious. Dude, Seattle's legit. They're serious. <laughs> they got rid of Russ. They got rid of their cancer, man. They feel, they're thriving. They're feeling good. I'm taking like, Seattle on the road then. Because apparently Arizona can't get right. I don't hate that. I think there's a stat about Arizona at home being bad, but I'm going to take them at home. It's mm-hmm. just... Seattle shouldn't be good. They're still good. I'm just waiting for the fraud game. So I'm just going to hope it. Hope this is the fraud game. And, and the way – here's another thing when I was kind of thinking about this game is the way that they've been feeding D-Hop, I wouldn't be surprised if he has like a four-touchdown game. True. He had a very good – He's insane, bro. Come back got, last like, week. The way that he stuck out his hand and grabbed that ball like Spider-Man, he's awesome. He's, he's – 30, he's washed, he's above 30, whatever. How old he is, he's so still so good. So good. Especially in the end zone. He's he's the best end zone threat. I mean, he, Target. He's, he's just... It's, oh, he's so good in the end zone. JT, who you got? So good. Seattle. I love D-Hop. You, you, you got feelings for this one? I love D-Hop, bro. He's Damn, so dude. good. Like, I used to, think, that whole, uh, I used over to think that he had the best feet in the NFL. Like, and, like he was making sideline plays. Like, the way that he could tap his toes in, like... Right before the white, like, so good. And he's got some huge hands, like, the way he just catches the ball. He's made some absolutely spectacular plays in his career with some of the worst quarterbacks. D-Hop's an, no awesome, man. D-Hop's an awesome player. I do love D-Hop. I'm just giving Drew a hard time. I, it's, it's, I was starting to feel myself get yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> better calm down. I better change a pair of pants. But uh, I got the, the, the Cardinals at home covering, too. I don't care that Cod came out last week. I think the vibes are better right now with uh, D Hop coming back and Kyler, you know, feeling like he's you know five foot ten now, a little taller, you know, kind of yeah. getting back up in the ranks. That chest um, out. You know, Cardinals are going to cover. So and uh, you know they have the uh, midseason hard knocks. You know that's our show. Arizona should be filming now, uh, upcoming weeks for uh, HBO. So maybe this is the kickstart they need. Just give me a cribs edition of Cliff Kingsbury's house in the middle of Scottsdale. That's what I want to see out of that show. I'm going to buy his house. You think I'm playing? When he get fired and move to LA, I'm going to be the first one to buy his house. Tell your friends about our podcast so Vol can buy the house. <laughs> We're going to just deck it out. It's going to be beautiful. <laughs> you can come by whenever. So I'm in the pool. The Rams going to Tampa. I'm surprised about this line. I see Tampa opening up at minus three. I'm going to go with the Rams to cover. I think the Rams are due. I'm surprised they didn't get make any trades, pick up Odell yet officially, but I think Stafford has more good games ahead than bad games, especially after coming off to their second loss to the 49ers. I, I like the Buccaneers here at home. Um, I think Brady's putting Giselle behind him in the rearview mirror. I think Tampa's looking at L.A. like, hey, both of us are struggling. We were both, you know, the, the top, top two teams in the NFC last year. Um, and even though our records don't reflect it, we both know each other's rosters are very good. So I think Tampa will be prepared and ready to go at home. For me, I'm starting to put this on the coaching staff. Uh, not that Brady isn't some to blame for this, but it just seems like Todd Bowles doesn't have real control in that locker room. So I don't know if Leftwich needs to take – Control in there and maybe speak up a little bit more, but I also have the Rams to uh, to cover on the road. I think also <clears throat> Tampa's defense is hurting them terribly. Like they had kept them in some of the games, but I don't know if they just can't hang on or what. They don't seem like they're the same defensive unit as last year. My pick for Tampa to make it to the Super Bowl is looking extremely, extremely unlikely right now. Buffalo's still holding up their end, though, so we'll see how that plays out. Tennessee at Kansas City, Sunday night game, 7 p.m. Central Time. Kansas City favored by 12 and a half. I am going to take Tennessee to cover. I like what they're doing. They are using Malik Willis more than I thought they would, but it's all good. Well, Tannehill was out last week, so we kind of had to play. Um, I think that's the reason why this number is so large. I'm hoping that they can stay within it because I am also going to stick with Tennessee. Uh, and just hope that they can kind of do something crazy. But then again, Mahomes does love primetime. And he is no stranger to putting on a show under the Sunday Night Lights. So uh, I may regret this, but I'm going to take Tennessee. Um, 
Derrick Henry's kind of getting into his his groove where he's just a bad man running downhill, and it's I don't want to get in front of him. I love it, JT. I'm with you guys. I like the Titans covering on the road. Um, I think their defense keeps them in it. Uh, we'll see that the obviously the factor of Tannehill playing, they're in a better spot if Tannehill plays because they don't either trust Malik Willis right now, or maybe Malik Willis doesn't trust himself at this point. Um, but I still like them to cover twelve and a half. That's a lot of points. He was good enough to beat the Texans. That <laughs> uh, says a lot. No, does it? All I'm right, not Texans. <laughs> I'm not the Texans. Yeah, <laughs> we're just we're a dumpster fire right now. More of unfranchised. Yep. Baltimore Ravens. Last game before we got Brady's bet. Traveling to New Orleans. Nola. New Orleans plus three. I don't know if Jameis is going to play again. I think it's still going to be Andy Dalton. Just depends on if he has a pregame rap for us. You saw that. He made it for the uh, Eat a Dub speech with the fire rap. So funny. I did not see that. Oh, man. I kind of want to play it on air. but so good. It was pretty good. Yeah, some flow. Jameis is comedy. You know, he's he's a locker room guy. Got I have, have uh, I have Baltimore minus three here. I continue to to bet against the Saints. Last week I was very surprised. Who did they shut out? Uh, Vegas. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, they didn't get past midfield. That was a very surprising game. Yeah. I mean, New Orleans has a good D, but you would have thought some Vegas would out of something. Vegas. Yeah, there were all this offensive hype going into the season. Um. But yeah, let's say Baltimore does a little bit better on defense this game and is able to control New Orleans, who doesn't really have a great defense to begin with. Uh, that being said, Rokon Smith makes a big uh, jump and, and helps out the defense, kind of like you predicted. Tremendous. So let's take Baltimore on Monday night. JT? Ravens got it. Ravens? Yeah, Ravens cover three Ravens. on the road. <clears throat> I don't think New Orleans is very good. I think Vegas was just that much worse that day. Yeah, I think uh, gonna be a good. Um, you agree? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna Sorry, be a well, good. I mean, yeah. Without the camera, I'm about to say. I, I also agree. I think Baltimore is definitely going to prove that they're the better team. Um, it this this season has just been chaotic because when you look at the NFC South, everyone, including myself, had Tampa winning. The fact that. Carolina has now gotten away from McCaffrey, has now gotten away from their coach. Um, Atlanta started off a lot better than we thought, but they're still not quite there. Like, if Atlanta made the playoffs, they're definitely going to lose their first game. But um, it's interesting to see how the NFC plays out. So, time for Brady's bet. We got the game between Philly and Houston. Philly and Houston will be at Brady. Who are you going to go with? He's looking. He's trying to figure out. Oh, the smart pup. He went to Philly side. I would have also went to Philly side. Actually, I disagree with you, sir. I'm going to be at that game. If Houston can't cover 14, oh, I'm definitely throwing some on the field. They may not let me back for the game against Cleveland. But I understand where Brady's coming from. Hey, Brady, guess what? I agree with you, pup. Hold on. The dog's trying to jump over the horse. Not sure what he's doing. There he goes. You know, all right, all right. He's only you know a, a big goofy, goofy labradoodle. He's okay. Philly's Philly's great. Um, Philly's great. I got Philly covered in fourteen. The Texans are just walking, walking dead, zombie mode, just unbelievable. And then Cooks is probably gonna be pissy in the locker room, like, man, I didn't get traded. Everyone's like, man, I thought you got traded too. Like, exactly. what are you still doing here? Yeah. Like, why is your why is your stuff in your, stuff in your locker? <laughs> um, and Philly's just gonna roll us. Yeah. But that's okay. If we trade the city of Philadelphia this game for the World Series. Totally fine by it. You know what? That's a great way to That's look at it. That's a sacrifice we'll make. That's a great way to look at it. Drew? Why don't I'm we... hoping that Houston covers, and what my thought process on it is, is that this game is going to be an under. Um, therefore, there's not going to be a lot of points. Therefore, it's going to be harder to cover the spread unless they win like 20 to 7. Yeah. So That could happen. Uh, <laughs> that would be 13. Yeah. 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 So We can't score. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I'm hoping... Uh, now I'm talking to myself. Yeah, how many points do we need to score to give ourselves a chance to win? To cover. 20? Yeah, you think to we... To win or cover? <laughs> to cover. How many oh, points do you think to we need cover? to cover? Probably 14. Probably 17 14. to 14. Yeah. Thursday night defense, we should be able to not give up more than 28. I'm, I'm going to stick with the Texans. Yeah. Somebody's got to. I'm st- staying with the Zonies. 
Your and heart doesn't. We'll be there. That's why I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Want to mention before we go, the For the Squad holiday giveaway is starting today. That's today when we're recording, November 1st. When you're listening to this, it'll be November 2nd. So go on Instagram, follow at Red Dot Radio Inc. Repost the post for the holiday giveaway. There will be a new post each week. It will go until the week of Christmas. Though it is a holiday, we're just going to keep it flowing. No matter what your beliefs are, you're included. Repost. Then make sure that you're following us and your name will be entered and for a free t-shirt. We'll be sending out graphics for what the t-shirt is going to look like and more information about when the drawing will happen. will definitely be after the 25th, probably before the 1st. So go on Instagram, at Red Dot Radio Inc. Repost the holiday giveaway for the squad post. Make sure you're following us. If you're not following us, your name will not be entered. And wait and stick around. You'll get another chance next week. So tell your friends, anyone wants a cool-looking T-shirt, sign up. And that's all we got for today. Anything else before we wrap up? Go Strohs. Hell yeah. Go Strohs. Time to get this thing popping. We will be back next week. Have a good one. For the Squad is brought to you by Red Dot Radio.